Hi, this is Mike Hibbert. I'm back with another Django Python tutorial for you. This time we're going to look at the subject of cookies and sessions. Um, and this will help us to set up nicely for another tutorial that I'm going to do next, which is all to do with uh, managing users for their logins and for their registrations and that sort of thing. Um, so first of all, we're going to take a look at the, the sessions and cookies, and that will help us to understand how that later stuff works. So the first thing we need to do um, to actually use sessions in our system is a little bit of configuration work. In our settings.py file for our, um, our project folder, in there we should see a section that says middleware classes. And in there, there should be a line that it may or may not be commented, depending on which uh, version of Django you're using. Um, I'm using the brand new ver version that you get straight from the website. So in mine, you can see it's already uncommented. Um, if it isn't, com uh, isn't commented in your system, then just take the comment away and that should be okay. You don't have to do any typing, just make sure that it's available. Um, and then that's it for this, the configuration of the Django framework. Um, with that done, all we need to do is actually look at how to use the API. This is just one thing that we need for sessions. You don't, however, need this for cookies. So if you're not going to use sessions, don't include it because that will make your website a bit lighter on the memory side and on, uh, on the, the load side when it pulls in modules. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, take a look in our views.py now this is the the views.py file for our articles app that we've created within our project and in there we've got already got two views that we created in previous tutorials what we're going to do is we're going to slightly extend this um, view the articles view, which is the one that lists all of the articles. We're going to put in a, a, a slight addition to there just to demonstrate how sessions and cookies can be used. Um, it isn't ter terribly useful, but it does give you an idea of how things plug in together. So the first thing we need to do is we need to um, add in a few, uh, um, another module. And the one we're going to use is the HTTP response module. Um, the reason being that we're going to do a very small um, view that just basically allows us to set a string within our sessions and cookies. And then and, and more specifically, we're going to set a, like a region string um, or an encoding string. So in the case of, our, of my system, it's going to be en-gb, which is English, Great Britain. Um, and you know you can just basically set that at whatever string you want. It's it's not going to actually do anything major on this particular tutorial, but it does demonstrate how the system uh, can work. So the first thing we do do is import our HTTP response so that we can build our view. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to slightly alter the articles function, and I'm going to add a line that basically says language equals engb for my region code and session language. Now the difference between this variable and this variable is this one will be storing what's in the cookies and this one will be storing what's inside of our session. We're going to store the same value but then we're going to demonstrate how, how they get stored within those systems. Then we're going to say if lang, which is the set the cookie value that I'm going to put inside the cookies uh, dictionary of information if there is a language setting in there in the cookies then the language should then be set to whatever the value is of the language setting in the cookies and not what our default uh, volume vo sorry our default value should be now the next thing we need to do is we need to then place it inside of our template that we've been rendering and to do that we just lift, literally put in an extra comma on the end of this line here and put in a value to say that there's going to be a language variable put into that view into that template and this is what the value is going to be and that's enough for that 
the next thing we need to do is also to add in our new function. Now, I've made a language function and it comes along with a request but also a variable that's passed in with the default value of ENGB. We use our HTTP response object just to, to have something rendered into the browser window which just basically says set in language to whatever the language is. Um, and ideally what you could be able to do with this is once you use the URL you could actually replace um, the extra section on the end of the URL with some other encoding. Here is the next line where we just basically use our response object that we've generated from HTTP response. Now notice, just to be careful, we have request and response. Carefully you don't use the request object because you're not going to be able to use this method set cookie from that object there. What you need is your response object. So from the response object we use the set cookie method to set a variable inside the cookies of value language which of course defaults to ENGB for us at this moment and then we just return the response which should just then print our message set in language to whatever we set it to and that will just give us a confirmation so that's all we need to do with the view we need to now um, provide a set of URLs and then obviously somewhere to put the values inside of our template because this is a new URL, we haven't actually programmed it. So if we go to the URL section, we've got our previous URLs from the, the articles uh, URL patterns collection. And we'll add one more line, and that's a URL similar to the rest, but this time it's called language. And we're looking for a parameter to that URL on the end which will be something along the lines of um, some letters and also the hyphen because of obviously you know ENGB has a hyphen in so we want that we want that register regular expression to match there so that's good enough to actually match and then that will be passed through as a variable to our view as the variable named language just here and of course, where we end all of that by saying this is the view uh, method to, to call. And that's enough for our routing. That should then pass in anything that we put on the end of that URL as, a, as an argument to the language function inside of our app. The final step is just to make some space for the actual um, variable to be printed so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a header tag in there languages and whatever the language was so that language variable was set inside of our articles method we turned it into that as a parameter to the render response function which expects all the variables um, to be passed through for the context of this article's template. Okay, so that should be enough to get that on, on the underway. So let's just turn on our the Python server, our Django server. That's up and running. What do we see now? There we go. As you can see, I've already been messing around with this tutorial, so it's it's set to Spanish at the minute. Uh, so let's go and change that. And the way we do that is we go language. Uh, I'll just set it back to ENGB. Here we have our message that says we set it to ENGB. Now if I just click the back button just to go back, give it a refresh, you can now see that it's taken the value out of the cookie. So it's pulling out that language set in there, assigning it to here, and then passing it through here. That's not the 
the, the only way you could do that, you could probably reduce this line, these lines of code back down a little further than, than they are at the minute, but for, for the sake of showing how that works, it is as it is. So what about sessions? So we've, we've enabled the sessions middleware module inside the, uh, the settings.py file. How do we actually use the sessions? Well, here's how. The next thing we do is we go if lang is in the session the request dot session array which is basically a dictionary in the same way that the cookies is if it's in there then set our session language to whatever the session value is the lang setting inside of that session dictionary and that's how you can pull uh, information out of the session it's very simple nothing complicated at all really the next bit is we do uh, something that's similar to what we did with our language var variable we can declare another variable that can be passed through to our template and set its value using our, lo our current local variable then if we go to um, our language view we set the variable now notice the difference between the the cookie and the session the first thing we're doing is we're using the response object from our HTTP response to set the cookie value with sessions we use our request variable that comes in through the view and use the session dictionary and set its value through there so there's no set query it's just basically put a value in the session um, dictionary and that's good enough so now when we call this language URL it will now set a, ver a variable in the cookies but it'll also set something in the session so how we're going to differentiate which ones which and what the values are well in our template we're going to add another line just underneath and we're going to say the session language is whatever the value of that session language variable that we set just here in our view for the articles view and that will tell us how that's set so uh, with that that should be enough to get us to use the sessions so I need to restart the server just so that those changes in the Python code get recompiled and the server can start up with the latest code. So there we go. And now you can see that it's the session value still matches the last valuable variable uh, value that I put in. So our cookie's been updated, our session variable has not. So we, in order to fix that we need to go back and set our language again by calling the URL with that value on the end and that will take this value on the end of our URL and put it into both the cookie and the session and there you can there you can see it's now done that it's changed the session the cookie value to there and the session value is also that setting also so, as you can see, using session variables and cookie variables is pretty simple. Um, some of you might argue that it's, it's not a very good idea to use cookies. I probably agree with you. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I wanted to see how these things work at the lower level so that when we do something later on to do with users and getting people logged in and tracking whether their login, logs, logins are correct, etc., you'll understand what's going on behind the scenes. So that concludes this tutorial. Um, I hope this was informative to you, and I, I hope it did, uh, you know, help you to learn something new. If you enjoyed this video, then please click the like button. And if you want to see more in the series, as uh, as I pr produce more tutorials, then please subscribe to this channel, and uh, I'll update you as soon as the next one's out. Okay, thanks for watching.